Super special thanks to NAB for sponsoring this video. NAB New is a website that lets you follow all your favorite fandoms. Everything from anime, movies, graphic novels. They got everything. You can get trading cards, figures, plushies. It searches all the biggest sites so that I know when something I want releases. Like how I can update my collection of Castlevania DVDs. I didn't even know this released. Not only that, but NAB makes it easy to compare prices. And since I'm always looking for the best deal, that's really convenient. And it's easy to see if something is in stock. They'll even help you find variations of what you're looking for. You can browse all the things you're interested in. It has way more fandoms than I would have imagined and is great for discovering new ones. Right now, NAB is giving away $50 for every 100 people who sign up, but only for a limited time. NAB will buy up to $50 of anything on their site. You can follow the link below to send you straight to their site. Also, this video kept getting copyright claimed a bunch, so instead of, like, hyper-editing this stuff, I just put footage of my dogs over the parts that were causing me problems. Okay, cool. Now, when it comes to Italian animation, there's always been that certain charm that they bring that I can't find quite anywhere else, especially with the golden example, Wings Club. But there was another series that you guys told me about saying that if I liked Wings Club, then I should check out Angel's friends. But before I get into that, this, this channel is about to hit 250,000 subscribers. First of all, thank all of you. You guys are totally cool. And also, for to celebrate, I'm opening a P.O. box that's only going to be open until this date. So if you want to send me literally anything, you can. It is only for a limited time. Also, I'm uh, there's the exclusive art prints that I'm that I'm selling in order to you know fund future projects, but also to give you guys cool things uh, to have. You can get uh, some uh, some artwork from you know my Patreon that you know aren't going to be in art prints. You can't even get this on my Patreon. You have to do it through the fo the Google form down below in the description. Also, you can just get a print of me if you want. If that's your thing, I don't judge. It's PayPal only, and I'm going to start shipping at the end of this month. So act now. Now, maybe. Originally a single issue comic book by Simona Ferry, probably pronounced that wrong, Angel's Friends centers around Raph. I'll be up in a minute, Mom! Oh. Oh man, that's that's gonna be distracting. Come back here, Cox! Nope, nope. That's going to be more distracting. Be quiet, Cox. You're right, Cox. <sighs> Calm down, Cox, Cox, Cox. So, Raph goes to the angel school to learn how to be a guardian angel. You know, that trope where when someone is having trouble deciding between two choices, a little angel and the devil appears on their shoulders. Well, now we're kind of seeing it from their point of view. And since humans also have free will, and she can't actually force people down the path of righteousness, she's limited in what she can really do. I don't understand. We're supposed to fight the devils, but we can't obstruct them? It's simple. If angels and devils fought together at the same time, they would only confuse the humans, who must be free to make their own choices. Therefore, when an angel is at work, a devil can't interfere, and vice versa. They must take turns. And in order to decide who gets to go first with their human, they have a small little contest. Like a surfing race, where the first to touch a buoy gets first dibs. You know, normal things. But get this, they have a reverse magical girl transformation. She transforms into a human so she can interact in the human world. Never in my life would I imagine a reverse magical girl transformation. She also has a roommate named Dory in English. It's all right if you don't wanna talk about it. I know how you feel. You know I've got my own bad dreams. I guess everybody does. Dory, how did you know I had a nightmare? Hi there. I realized while I was editing this that um, she doesn't actually say Dory. Uh, she says her actual name, Uri, like, you know, Uriel and Raph is for Raphael. And the way the reason it sounded like Dory is just because it was cut weird. And um, basically all the jokes I was going to make are thrown in the trash because I was just, I, I heard it wrong. So continuing on to the rest of the people who she knows, there's also Mickey and Sweet. Mickey's name actually stayed the same, but Sweet? Really? You changed Dolce's name to Sweet. Out of all the options you had, that's probably the most offensive. 
but that's not uncommon, seeing as basically every single language, every language changed Sweet's name. Except in the actual animation. But the reason the show is called Angel's Friends is because when Raph is facing off against her devil counterpart, Sulphus, she can call her friends to help her out. Which would be cheating, but Sulphus is a devil and always cheats anyway, so who really cares? Together, they managed to lift my spirits. Why did my spirits need to be lifted? The usual, men. Oh my gosh, me too. I'm sorry. Mwah. Aw, that's cute. She kissed Cox. <laughs> This video is getting demonetized. There's also a third strange and mysterious person named Reyna who seems to be obsessed with Raph. My lady, I have the devil's glove. It's not the glove I'm interested in. Hang on. Is that Dan Green? My lady, I have the devil's glove. But hold on! Because if that didn't mess with you, Solfus has the same voice actor as Sonic. What do you mean? I'm not in the mood to play games with a bunch of angels. I'm not in the mood to play games with a bunch of angels. So Reyna and Malachi are trying to make Raph and Solvis spend time together so that they fall in love. And that's somehow going to free her, I guess. Then they capture Raph and Solvis for some sort of plan that they have, but their friends start realizing something is going on when both of them disappear. Raph and Solvis manage to get free. Do you have any idea what the writing means? It doesn't matter. Whatever the writing may say, we don't really have a choice. Just perfect. My two guests have entered the deadly labyrinth just as I had planned all along. Solfus got beat up pretty bad in that labyrinth, but they managed to find a way out back into the human world, which is totally not an illusion that's tricking them as part of the Reina's plan. And just before they kiss each other, which would free Reyna from her prison in Limbo, their real friends find them and the illusion is broken. So close, but no dice. You know, the story this far isn't really all that bad. It's just hard to look past the floaty animation, the bad lip sync, and how characters will like start talking before the other character finish talking as if they already know what they're going to say. And it's getting really annoying and it's starting to feel very unnatural. And it feels like they're just trying to squeeze in as many lines as possible when really it just hurts the flow of the show. It's an ideal place for a wonderful trip with friends. Oh, now it's on TV? I'll listen to music instead. Come to the Caves of Obscurity. I swear, I didn't edit this. They literally used a screenshot of iTunes. The production value of this show is two cents and a piece of toast. What I don't get is that it's taboo for an angel and a demon to touch each other, but then they ride on the same bus during a school field trip. You'd think this would be like the last thing they'd do if it was really that big of a deal. And this becomes like a big thing in season two also, so like, really? During a tournament against the angels and devils, Solfus and Raph get sucked into the past where they see two very similar people who seem to also be in love so that they can see that their forbidden love isn't the first that's happened. Then they get upset with each other. You're just like Tycho. You told me you respected my decision. That was because I believed you were sincere. But now I understand what's really happening and I see you clearly! And during their fight, Raph gets beaten up. But then Solfus learns the angel power of healing, and they realize that they really do love each other. And they finally kiss. And because of such a sacrilege between an angel and a devil, Reyna is freed from her chains in limbo. Then they basically have to go to school court and have their powers restricted. In order to prevent Raph and Sulphus from being expelled, their headmasters go to Limbo to search for Reyna and see if she's behind this manipulating them. And they reveal that Reyna was an angel that took away the free will of her human to force him to love her. Skipping over some boring parts, basically they managed to gather enough evidence to prove that Sulphus and Raph were being manipulated by Reyna to fall in love with each other, meaning their kiss wasn't their fault, and therefore they won't be getting expelled. But before we continue with this video, I'd like to annoy you to subscribe. And then they tell everyone who the heck Reyna is, and you find out that the human Reyna made fall in love with her was Malachi, that guy that's basically her henchman now. 
Malachi made love potions to sell and manipulate people, and Reyna wasn't doing a good job keeping him on the straight and narrow, so she decides she'll use one of his love potions to make him fall in love with her in order to protect him. But when the potion doesn't work, she decides to go to the Hall of Earthly Portraits, which holds every human in existence, and takes it for herself. And that's how she ended up in limbo. The sacrilege was so insane, she was sent directly to limbo. Apparently it wasn't even like a decision, because they like to talk about the high spheres and the low spheres, wink wink, we all know who that is, but apparently it was just the universe got so upset, had a temper tantrum, and threw her into limbo itself. And she knew the only way to break free was to have another sacrilege in order to replicate that big release of energy so that she could escape. Somehow. I don't really get how that works, but you know, I'm just rolling with it. The details don't matter, what all you need to know is that they kept her identity a secret for half of the season until right now. And so they basically revert them back to square one. They assign them their original human, and I'm not really sure if Raph and Solfus even still really care about each other, like they- Wait a second! Man, they made merch of my favorite show, Tony X! What I appreciate about this show is that they do have a few one-shot episodes so that you can throw it on TV and not have anybody who's just watching the show for the first time be that confused. But regardless if it's just a one-off episode, they still keep the main plot aloft. Like right now, they Raph and Solfus aren't sure if they actually like each other or if it was just Reyna manipulating them. And even though this episode didn't develop the plot more, it still touched on the interpersonal problems between the characters. It made it to where it felt like every episode was worth watching. At least a little bit. Skipping over some more boring parts, Reyna traps them so she can talk to them. She says that they do actually love each other and that the real enemy are their teachers who are preventing them from being together. And then she drops this. They were the ones who punished you for violating the veto. That was fair because we committed a sacrilege. A sacrilege? Don't make me laugh. Mama? If it was such an awful sacrilege, why did nothing happen? In fact, why didn't the whole world collapse as it did with Tycho and Psy? Hmm. See? You don't know the answer, because there isn't one. Arkan and Temtel lied to you. Arkan has been guarding a painful secret. He has never revealed to you the nature of your true identity, Raph. My true identity? You are really quite different from all the other angels you've known, because... Huh? You were not born an angel. Huh? Wow. Spreading doubt in their hearts and making them think the people who were once on their side is actually their enemy, while also saying that she has knowledge about them that even they don't know in order to make them consider trusting her to discover the truth? I've seen this a thousand times, but it is still love it. It never ceases to intrigue me whenever they do this. Raph can't help but keep going back to Reyna to learn about her past, and Reyna tells her that her parents were the rulers of an empire, and the angels and devils were so caught up in manipulating them that their parents were killed due to their meddling. To make it up to Raph, they adopted her to give her a better life. Raph decides to go to the portrait room to find the portrait of her own parents and see if Raph was right. Wait, why don't you just go to your headmaster and ask. I mean, I get it, Reyna so doubt in their mind, they're not sure if they can trust them, but are you really gonna trust Reyna? Like, let's be real here. Oh wow, Reyna just used them so she can get access to the portrait room? I'm so surprised. So they fight, they lose, and then Reyna is free to take the portrait of every human in existence so that she can control the fate of humanity as revenge against the angels and devils. Come here, you. Oh, Reyna, my lady! Oh, Reyna! Oh! I'm not sure they could have done that in a way that was more uncomfortable to sit through. And when they ask Raph why she went to the portrait room, she tells them about how she was born a human. And then it turns out that she actually was? The, the headmaster tells her that it wasn't the right time to tell her, and like... I'm gonna be honest, I definitely thought that wouldn't happen. And so they go to Reyna's house with honestly a pitiful army to fight her, and they start fighting. 
And when she obviously starts losing, she says, fine, I'll just kill all the humans. So the angels and devils just go back home. Not only that, but Reyna says that all angels and devils need to leave Earth. So Raph goes to Reyna with a plan. She tells her how she wants to join Reyna and how she's not really an angel, so she wants Reyna to be the one to rule over her. And in order to prove herself, she needs to destroy her school. And then she does. So now Reyna fully believes that Raph is on her side. But not really, turns out Sweet was making an illusion to make it look like the school was burning down, everything's fine. When Raph goes into the new portrait room in Reyna's house, Malachi catches her in the act, but then he sees his own portrait, and Raph tells her that Reyna used his own portrait to force him to be her servant. Also, Malachi lost all of his memories when that happened, but whatever, now you know. Anyway, Malachi gets his memories back and decides that Reyna is actually bad and teams up with Raph. Has Reyna told you the history of your parents? Yes, she told me that they were killed in an accident caused by angels and devils. Well, she lied to you. Believe me, Raph, I'm alive. Are you saying- Yes, Raph. I am your father. Wait. <laughs> really? Reyna catches them, Malachi does a classic self-sacrifice, and Raph gets away. Then the headmasters tell them about Prism Fly, which basically just gives them a new magical girl transformation, including the guys, but they don't look as good. But apparently Reyna got a new transformation too, and absorbs all their powers. Somehow. However, Raph gets to transform too, and that puts an end to Reyna and her evil scheme. And that's literally it. They don't even show Reyna being defeated. It's just, it's, Raph transforms, there's a big flash of light, and then, oh man, uh, they, she wakes up in a hospital, and ooh, uh, hey, you beat, you beat her. Like, that's not satisfying at all. That's how you end the season? And the plot twist with Raph's father wasn't even satisfying. Honestly, I just think it's kind of weird how it wasn't just Reyna lying. And why did, how did Reyna just change into a weird Ursula girl? That was... It's just stuff just happens sometimes in this show and they don't explain why. Reyna is back in limbo, the humans are saved, and Raph's father is dead. Everything goes back to normal. I like the story overall, but it's the delivery of that story that isn't quite what I was hoping for. They'll just introduce some details that were never foreshadowed, and then they expect us to just roll with it. A lot of what happens feels like they're just kind of pulling it out of their butt. I did like Reyna as a villain well enough, and the conflict that they created around Raph and Sulphus was probably the most entertaining part of this entire series. And now that they've laid the groundwork to develop Raph even more, we have season two. Oh, wow, the ratio is 16 by nine now. I don't have to edit this as much anymore. They waste absolutely no time with the plot. These bad guys have Raph's mom. Don't know why, but they do. And now this girl named Blue who works under them. Blue hypnotizes Sulphus and tells him to meet her at a secret location later. And so Sulphus meets the bad guys and they say that unless Sulphus serves them, they'll hurt Raph's mom. Now they have new headmasters who are totally not the bad guys, and the angels and devils are being assigned all new humans to protect. Blue manages to manipulate the angels into spying on the devils, and Raph reads a fake message history to make it look like Sulphus is involved with another girl. They're really just trying to anger and confuse Raph for unknown villainous purposes. Both the good and evil sides understood that the war would end after a thousand centuries when the Comet of Fate came by. The Comet is the signal of destiny that roams the skies. And it's said that every time it comes around, the history of the universe changes forever. When the Comet of Fate passed by, it signaled that the war would end. If the devils had won then, the angels would disappear and the earth would be evil forever under devil rule. But if the angels had been victorious, we would be the ones to disappear and the earth would be a completely good world. 
I'm sure this information isn't important. Let's ignore it and move on. I know that the rule is it's forbidden to touch or hinder an angel or a devil. The high and low spheres decided that the veto would be the one procedure that could prevent any further war. And in order for it to be remembered, they etched it on a Libra. What's a Libra? I'm a Libra. The Libra of the veto was forged from an indestructible material. Then it was hidden in a place that was inaccessible by both angels and devils. <laughs> wow, don't you just love obvious and not subtle at all exposition? <laughs> Me too. The bad guys who are manipulating Raph are confusing. They want Raph and Solfus to fight, but then they want them to get back together, and they don't say why. Yes, it's explained later on, but while you're watching it, it's like, what the heck? This seems pointless. Then they want Sulphus to kiss Sweet in front of Raph. Like, can we get just a hint of an explanation, please? Your big plot doesn't feel like it's a master plan unless we can follow what the heck is going on. And when Sulphus tries to sneak around the bad guys, Blue bites him and puts him under her control. Then they imprison Sulphus because he's becoming a problem. They clone him, and while Sulphus is locked up, Blue and him have a chat about how Blue thinks she's... falling in love. Please don't make a love triangle. Please don't make a love triangle. Please don't make a love triangle. Okay, slight tangent. A lot of episodes have massive chunks dedicated to the humans they protect, and a lot of the time it doesn't have that much bearing on the plot. Usually it's just the writers making it to where all the humans are in the same place, so all the main characters who are protecting those humans are also in the same place. Or Sweet falling in love with her human or whatever. I mean, yes, the reason they focus on the humans is so that they can, you know, guide them through what is right and wrong when it's really actually just a lesson for the audience because this show was targeted for very young ages and so they have the humans be the audience so that you can like have a debate with the angels and the devils so that in case the audience the kids is actually in that situation they have some sort of framework to work with that being this show all i'm saying is it gets boring these pangs of jealousy will eat away at Raph. Watch. Indeed. Soon Raph will explode into a jealous rage, which means she will have both love and hate beating in one terrestrial and everlasting heart. But that would trigger a discordant vibration. Exactly, huh? Blue. And thanks to the pendant that Raph now wears around her neck, this discordant vibration will show us the way to the Libra of the Veto. Oh, that's why they mentioned the Libra earlier. <laughs> Never would have guessed. Sulphus manages to seduce Blue and steals the key in order to escape. And the clone used a poison on Sweet to make her hallucinate, to make her, you know, think that he's actually the human she's falling in love with, and then kissed her in front of Raph. Sweet and Sulphus, they're, they're kissing. Oh. Oh. And now Raph feels both love for Sulphus and hate for Sulphus, which causes a disharmonic resonance that pulses throughout the universe. I don't really get it either, just roll with it. And the frequency creates a light trail directly to the Libra of the Veto, where the enemies can follow it. But hold on, they now have the Libra in their possession, but... They still need Raph to help them destroy it. In other words, they get to drag this plot out even more. Just when I was starting to lose interest, they decide to spit in my face. And not in the good way. Now everyone blames Sulphus, the real Sulphus. Sulphus is put on trial for kissing an angel, but the judges are the bad guys. But he doesn't know that they're the bad guys, but so he's basically screwed, even though he's desperately trying to explain what happened. And then Sweet confesses. Did you kiss Sulphus? No, I... Are you certain of that? Uh, I did not kiss Sulphus. I kissed a terrestrial. Alexander. Um, I'm in love with a terrestrial boy. Huh? Uh, you can return to your rooms. This whole thing is all Raph's fault. Don't listen to anything they say. But they're all uh -huh. right. If you had just given Sweet a chance to explain, none of this would have happened. 
So you think this is all my fault, huh? Of course it's your fault. This is actually getting kind of good. Oh, it's so scandalous. And then they kind of just skip over all the fallout and have Raph go to her old headmaster and he literally tells her that she's being manipulated again. They don't bother exploring all this drama they spent 30 episodes building up to. They just cut through it. And then they all sit down and talk it all through, completely skipping over all that juicy drama, even though the drama is the best part of the show, but okay, whatever. There's this big tangent where they need to find maps to the Libra, and they go to each other's cities, and the angels proceed to get drunk. Doesn't matter, they get the map eventually. They find the temple, but they decide that Raph and Sulfus should be the only ones to go. Unsurprisingly, they get ambushed, and Raph decides to use the Angelic Star, her ultimate superpower, to help Sulfus, which is exactly what the bad guys wanted because it breaks the Libra for them. Also, Raph's mom wakes up. I always knew I had some special gifts. Among them is... The ability to resolve stubborn conflicts, to heal wounds that are painful and dangerous to the soul. It seems I always had this gift. Whenever there was a conflict, people would ask for my advice. In any case, the reigning king turned to me, a simple woman, in an effort to avoid a bloody and terrible war. Now, dog! <laughs> Unfortunately, the rulers in town weren't the only ones who had noticed my powers. So yeah, that's why those two took her. Raph's mom was important to both angels and devils, and they kidnapped her to start another war, hoping that angels and devils would blame each other or something, whatever. It's not good, it doesn't make sense. After destroying the Libra of the Veto, Cassidy and Kubral began to gather their armies. As the Comet of Fate moves closer to the Earth, when it passes, it will determine who wins, angels or devils, and the losers will vanish forever. I like it when they summarize things so that I don't have to. So their big idea is to use a loophole in the war code. They challenge the war generals in order to replace them. And once they're in power, they'll just not go to war. And then they have several episodes in which they compete in what's basically a miniature tournament arc that doesn't really build up to anything. It just feels like they're padding out more episodes. I mean, this season is killing me, guys. What happened? Wait, I guess that's my job, crud. They're legitimately just dragging out the whole plot. And more importantly, if Raph's mom is supposedly so good at, you know, finding a middle ground between two enemies, why don't they just get Raph's mom to talk with the two generals? Have her fix it, that's it. And more importantly, the jokes are boring. The only joke that they own, literally the only one they use is this one demon, this one devil, who is obese, and he always talks about how hungry he is. And that's the only joke you ever hear. Skipping over several episodes, they fight and they don't do well, because of course they don't. And for some reason, Sulphus and Raph's connection create a magical light. Then that magic light ricochets the meteor away, because... Okay, and then Raph's mom comes in to do more exposition. You see, generals, by breaking the Libra of the Veto, you've both upset the universal balance. But Raph and Sulphus, with their embrace, have restored the balance between good and evil again. There's a new truce between angels and devils, opponents forever, but never again deadly enemies. How do you know this? Anyway, the generals get arrested, and then... That's it! Oh yeah, wait, Solfus and Raph do decide to, like, become human so that they can live their lives together, which they've been hinting at for a very long time. So that's neat, I guess. But what the heck was that story? How did the second season manage to fall on its face that hard? They hint that there'd be something with Blue in the third season and that Reyna would come back, but there is no third season. So, like, whatever. Angel's Friends is a neat story, but... With awkward voice acting, and a dragged out plot, weird timing, and less than impressive voice lines, it's hard for me to recommend Angel's Friends to anyone. And even though season two looked promising, it was a slog to watch. 
Season one was way better in terms of both its story and its delivery of that story. And I already said the delivery of the story was a bit lacking. It really looked like season two was going to build off of what happened in season one, but they didn't really do all that much. I thought there'd be a whole lot more with Raph's mom, but nope. <laughs> Might as well just throw her away. I mean, oh my gosh, she was literally just used as a as a bargaining chip to make Solfus do what they want him to do. Anyway, you can attribute why Angel's friends went away for a few reasons. My favorite reason is that season two sucked so bad that the writers decided to never show their faces again. But the more likely reason is that this is an Italian show. More importantly, it's an Italian show that feels and looks a lot like Winx Club. And going up against Winx Club, well, good luck, you're gonna fail. More importantly, it's just not as good as Winx Club. I'll admit there are some creative elements that I do like better than Winx Club, but all in all, Winx Club is still better. However, all that being said, there is rumor that Angel's Friends is going to get a Japanese dub, but that's only rumor that I've seen on forums, and I can't actually find actual evidence that this is happening. There are no articles that I found where they actually announced this. So frankly, I doubt this is actually true. In terms of any solid information of why it went away, I can't really find any. Trying to research this doesn't really yield many results. There's not a lot to look at in terms of Angel's Friends. I didn't even know Angel's Friends existed until one of you guys recommended it to me. And sure, that could just be a circumstance of me being American and the show being Italian, and so there's probably a lot more information on Italian websites that I just can't read. And in terms of toy sales, there is evidence that there are toys of Angel's Friends. There are some dolls, there's a, like one or two doll sets that I found, and even Kinder Surprise toys. But if Angel's Friends didn't have a strong merchandising or marketing push, then it's no wonder why this show flopped. My guess is that Judging on how lackluster the animation was in general, it seemed like they didn't actually have that much budget to work with, so they couldn't actually do a big push like they needed to. Anyway, you can watch the, actually the entire series on YouTube for free. They are all officially uploaded by Mondo on the Angel's Friends official YouTube channel, which scares me a lot because there's a good chance they're gonna copyright claim this video. And they uploaded like all the languages that it was dubbed in. Basically all of them. You can watch it in Russian if you want to. Now, if you have any potential information that I missed, because I know I have a bunch of people who are in Italy, who no doubt watch this show, leave a comment telling me what I missed. And don't forget about the P.O. Box and art prints that I have available for a very limited time. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, stay beautiful, and keep playing.